Hello. In this lecture, we will explain the difference between circularity for consumer goods and circularity for the built environment. As a user, you can already help to lower the impact on the environment. You are able to make choices. Let's assume I prepare a picnic with friends. How can I reduce my impact? I could reduce waste by shopping at the market, where everything is wrapped in paper instead of plastic bags, as they do in the supermarket. To bring home everything, I can use a sturdy shopping bag to avoid even more plastic. Afterwards, I can separate my waste to sort the glass, plastic and paper. That's easy. I try to reduce my impact even more on a daily basis. I repair the stuff that breaks, like my clothes or furniture, and when my car has a problem, I go to a garage. As a user, you can actively refuse and reuse. There are already the first two strategies to be mentioned in our discussion about circularity. As designers, we have to think about how to reuse valuable materials in order to bring them back into the loop. The design and placement of a recycling bin, for instance, is already something we can think about at an urban level. This will help everyone to sort waste. Talking about my broken car. Cars are designed to be repaired and also recycled after the end of use. They follow the principles of design for disassembly. The European car industry already agreed on to recycle 95% of the weight of a car. In order to achieve this high rate of recycling, the design for disassembly strategies are applied into the design of the car at the very beginning. The design for disassembly can be seen as the master strategy of design. It allows reuse, repair, remanufacturing and recycling. Many consumer goods are already designed for disassembly. In comparison to consumer goods, the building sector looks very different and the end of use is not taken into account. Do you know how to disassemble or demolish a building? You need big machines like excavators, cranes, with wrecking balls and other heavy machineries. The pure size of a building makes it more difficult to take an entire building apart and sort the materials out in order to bring it back into the circle. A big difference in comparison to consumer goods is also the lifespan. A usual building will last from 30 to 50 years, sometimes even longer. A good design will already allow to transform the function of a building. We have seen good examples of industrial buildings transformed into wonderful lofts where many of us would love to live or work. By the way, our own faculty is already in its third transition of use. We can already mention that you should consider flexibility during the design phase of a building in order to avoid an early demolition. So a good design in the beginning can already make a difference. The longer a building will serve a purpose, the lower the impact on the environment. Therefore, we should design robust and flexible buildings. But if the end of use is reached, we have to get rid of it, in order to make place for something new, hopefully designed and built in a way that results in less waste and allows to reuse components or recycle materials. In this lecture, we have now shared a couple of strategies, like refuse, reuse and recycling of the different materials and talked shortly about design for disassembly. All can and should be applied in the design phase of a building, product or component. If we look at the residential market, we are used to build in layers and the construction is mostly hidden behind layers of plaster, drywall and covered by wallpaper. On the outside of a load-bearing wall, we often find a layer of insulation that is again covered by a layer of plaster or hidden by a facade cladding. In this picture, you can see a layer of bricks. In general, we often see a clean surface that hides every component underneath. Floors most often will be made out of concrete, sometimes cast and poured on site, sometimes manufactured as prefab elements that will be connected on the site again with a layer of fresh concrete. This way of building construction will create problems at the end of use. The different layers of a building and its different life cycles will be explained in detail later in the course. 
To save energy, we seek for air tightness and often use liquid sealants like silicons or expanding foams to close the gaps and make the construction air and water tight. These products will stick to other materials and will make the recycling difficult. In general, we have to change the way we construct buildings. We have to avoid wet building methods like pouring concrete on site and the use of wet sealants as much as possible. Look at this picture. In our faculty, all the pipes and cables are visible. Doing so, you are able to access, update and maintain these very easy. Built like Lego. We see these lines very often to explain concepts that can be reused and reassembled, like the famous Danish building blocks. It's unfortunately not that easy, but we have to try to design buildings, components that can be taken apart in the way they are assembled. The comparison with the toy is still good, because everyone knows you never use glue and you never throw away a single block. We have tested a concept that aims for disassembling in a modular building system. We learned a lot from doing it and we will share this later in the course. We can't solely rely on recycling methods that are currently used, but we have to make sure that we can also reuse or repurpose our building components in the future. Our buildings have to be different. Today we have explained the differences of consumer goods and our built environment. They vary in size and the time being used. We have already mentioned a couple of problems and talked about strategies in order to design our future buildings. Over the next weeks, we will share first ideas towards this challenging future of circularity in the built environment.